Hey guys, here we are, last geometry video of the year. And we're going to be working on IXLT.1, which is just a quick intro to surface area and volume. So uh, two things we're going to be calculating. We're going to be working just with rectangular prisms, right? Most people would just call it a box. But uh, we're going to have to find the volume. That's going to give us answers of things that are like cubic feet. Right? In other words, if how much stuff goes in it, if you were like pouring water or beans or rice or corn or anything like that. Surface area, on the other hand, that's, um, you know, if you're making a box, how much cardboard would you need, right? The surface area of this uh, rectangular prism, sometimes we call it the net. A net is a way to visualize it. If, uh, but it's like, what are all the pieces of cardboard, if you were making this with cardboard, how much cardboard would you need to make this box. So that's surface area versus volume. How much stuff can you put inside? All right, so let's get into it. In particular, let's begin with this rectangular prism. Again, most people would call that a box. So in other words, how much stuff could you put inside of it? Well, pretty easy. I hope this is a review, but just a quick reminder, right? If it's a box like this, it's just volume equals length times width times height. Now it really doesn't matter what you call the length, the width, and the height. Um, so, um, you know, it's completely arbitrary. Um, but just to make it simple, I usually just kind of do it in order like this. I call this the length, I call this the width, and I call this the height, all right? It doesn't matter which you call which but just uh, pick one or the other, right? So our length here is nine feet. Our width is three feet. And finally, our height is seven feet, all right? We multiply all those out, right? Nine times three gives us 27. 27 times seven, probably wanna do that on your calculator, but you're gonna get yourself 189. Now look, feet times feet times feet. That means you have feet cubed, right? Now, I usually call it feet cubed myself, but uh, you can also write that out in words, especially if you're typing it, right? If you're uh, you know, in an email program or something, it's a little harder to say feet cubed like this. So you might just call it cubic feet, right? You can say it either way, both perfectly good answers. Like I said, it kind of depends how you're, how you're uh, writing it. So in this case, we've got 189 cubic feet. And again, because it was the volume, it's like I'm pouring water in it. How much water can I put inside of there? All right, now let's talk about surface area. Now surface area is a different kind of thing, right? So here's a different box. Now with surface area, like I said before, right? Sometimes you can think of it, right? As kind of unfolding it as a net. Or, right, in this case, like we said, this is surface area. You can also think of it as just breaking it up into pieces, right? If you were making this out of wood, right? If you're making out of wood, right, you're probably going to make a bunch of, of rectangles and nail them together. Now, what I like to do is, you know, rather than try and draw all this out, right? You, you probably aren't going to need to draw it twice for each of these. Um, I like to just keep track of things. Um, by putting a label on each surface. So I am going to call this surface A, right? So that's surface A, right? And that is right here, surface A, right? So look, here's 18, here's 16. Now, it often helps to rewrite those surfaces, those numbers off to the side, right? Here's 18, 18, 18. Notice those are all parallel, right? 18, 18, 18. All the surfaces that are, all the edges around that are parallel are going to be the same when it's rectangular, okay? This 16, 16, 16, right? So this is gonna be 16. Now I could write it in here too, but it's usually a little easier if you put it outside. It doesn't mess up your surfaces so much, right? So here's our 18 by 16, here's our A. Now we've got 16 by 20 here. That would be this surface here, B, right? So this is B. And then finally that leaves this guy right here, which Again, now look, I've got the 18, but look, here's 20, 20, 20. So let me put him over here as well. Sometimes it just helps to keep track of it that way, right? And so this would be surface C, right? So here's C. 
Okay. Now, again, you can you can do it all out like this um, and multiply it. You're, you're going to find right that surface A has got 288 square meters. By the way, notice it's square meters this time. This B is 320. This is 360. But again, notice you got to multiply times two because there's a front and a back, a top and a bottom. That's why there's twice as many, right? So if you were to add them all up, right, you're going to see something like this. You got 288, but there's two of them. You got 320, there's two of them. There's 360, there's two of them. And again, if I was doing the work, what I'd probably do, again, I'd just, just think about the fact you're not going to have a print out of this, right? You're probably going to have something like this. Now, you want to practice making boxes. Now, remember, keep parallel lines parallel. Notice how I, I really try to make sure those are all parallel. That makes it look better, right? And again, do the same thing here, right? Notice all the verticals go down. Now, this line, I'm trying to make it parallel to this line. This line, I'm trying to make it parallel to that line. Now, look, it sort of was a little long. That's okay, right? Um, and so then I just, again, write out my dimensions, right? I got 18, 16, and 20. And again, the box is less critical because it, again, it doesn't really matter which side you start with, right? So I probably, if I was doing it, I would show my work something like this, just to keep track of things, right? And say, look, A is going to be, right, A, and, L, and again, I was going to put 18, 18, 18, 16, 16, right? I'm going to say, oh, look, that's two times, because there's two of them, right? 16 by 18, right? And then B, right, two times, because there's two of them, 16 by 20, and C, right, and then I'm going to kind of bring over my work, is two times 18 by, and again, that's 20, okay, right, and then you're going to fill those in, again, boom, 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 add them up, and that will get one, nine, three, six, okay, all right, so just a way to set up your work, finally, let's look at this last one, sometimes you're not going to get a picture at all, okay, and again, you're going to draw it. Now, I showed you one way to do it, which is sort of off angle. I'm going to show you a slightly easier way to draw it. Um, so what, what's even easier is just start with a rectangle. Just start with a rectangle and then just show it kind of going back into the page. Okay, That's an even easier way to draw it. Right? It's pretty easy to draw a rectangle. And then just make sure those lines are all at the same angle. Right. If I had a ruler, notice, if I move that ruler, notice how they're always at the same angle. Boom, boom, boom. That just makes it look more realistic. And then it almost doesn't matter which, which number is which. It, it, you know, it's pretty it, arbitrary. So, okay, let's call this uh, 5, 7, and 7.8. Okay, 5, 7, and 7.8, right? And then, again, it's this time it's volume, right? So it's cubic. Right, so volume is length times width times height. Right, five times seven times seven point eight. Pretty quick and easy to do in your calculator. You get two hundred and seventy three again inches cubed. All right, that's it for today. Have an awesome one. It's been a great year, and enjoy your summer.